There are a lot of misconceptions around stealth. What it is, what it does, and how it works. One of the main ones I've seen people saying is that stealth makes an object completely invisible. And then on the opposite side, saying that it is completely useless. So which one is right? I've seen countless people talk about stealth in terms of being invisible. From people in the comments, to even the President of the United States when talking about the F-35. Basically, all stealth features do is make the object, in this case an aircraft, smaller, in terms of its radar return. You can think about it in a similar sense to your vision. After all, light waves and radar waves are the exact same thing. Both are electromagnetic radiation, only with different wavelengths. An automobile, for example, you can easily see at 300 meters, or 1000 feet. However, something much smaller, say an ant, you will not be able to see at that distance. It is not until you are much closer until you are able to see it. The same is true with stealth aircraft. A radar can still see, or detect them, however at much shorter ranges. So no, stealth does not make an object invisible. Stealth features on an object make that object smaller on radar by either reflecting away, or absorbing as much of the radar waves as possible, so that only a small amount is returned to the radar. Again, similar to the ant returning a smaller amount of light than the automobile to the viewer. I won't get into the details of materials or techniques used to make an object stealthy, but the objective of stealth features is to make the object have a smaller radar return. The size of these returns is typically measured in square meters, and called its radar cross-section, or RCS. A KID-class destroyer, a class of naval destroyers used before the newer Arle Burke class, is said to have an RCS of around 2,000 square meters when it is viewed from its side. By comparison, the newer stealthy Zoom Wall class destroyers, despite being much larger in terms of size and displacement, are said to have an RCS of only 20 square meters, due to its stealthy design. In terms of aircraft, a typical fourth generation fighter, say the F-15, has an RCS around 10 square meters, where the stealthy fifth generation F-22 is believed to have somewhere around 1 one thousandth of a square meter RCS. Now obviously the true figure is highly classified. Now these numbers may sound like a lot, or maybe they sound completely meaningless to you, but there is some math you can do with these figures to calculate the radar detection ranges. The formula for calculating it looks like this. However, if we are comparing two different aircraft against the same radar, same frequency, transmit power, etc., we can greatly simplify this down to the range being proportional to the fourth root of its RCS. If a hypothetical ground-based early warning radar can detect the F-15 at, say, 500 kilometers, then with the F-22, with an RCS 10,000 times smaller than that of the F-15, would be detected at only 10% of the range, or 50 kilometers. Keep in mind that this example is only in reference to radar. There are other methods of detection, such as infrared or visual, for which there are other stealth features to lessen the detection range of those methods. You may hear people mentioning quote-unquote stealth-busting radars that China and Russia are developing, and those are real. There are many ways to make detecting stealth aircraft easier. For example, lower frequency radars can detect at a much further range, and higher computing power can clean up the noise and detect an object that would otherwise be lost in the clutter by older radars. But the basic principle still stands. Stealthy aircraft, while maybe being detected at further ranges, will still be detected at shorter ranges than a non-stealthy aircraft. And that is the whole point of stealth, to give its user an advantage. They are able to get much closer to their target before being detected than a non-stealthy aircraft would. So in this case, stealth is not useless. If it were, nearly every major military power like the US, China, Russia, India, and Japan, and others would not be pouring massive amounts of money into developing their own stealth aircraft. However, there is a way which stealth may actually be useless, so to say. And that is the high cost. Not only do stealth aircraft cost more in a monetary sense, but also in terms of maneuverability, payload capacity, and huge propaganda loss if one of them is lost in combat. Stealth aircraft can cost significantly more than non-stealthy aircraft to build, and also much more to operate. The B-2 stealth bomber, for example, needs to be stored in a special temperature-controlled hangar. They have even constructed expensive mobile hangars so that the B-2 can operate at overseas bases, called the B-2SS. While stealth technology has come a long way since the first stealth aircraft, the F-117, stealthy features are not always the most aerodynamic features. Oftentimes there has to be some compromise between the two. Also to remain stealthy, weapons need to be carried internally, and not on the wings like other aircraft. For example, both the F-22 and F-35 can carry weapons externally on their wings, but will suffer a significant loss in its stealthiness. And finally, the cost of losing a stealth aircraft. In 1999, the F-117 was shot down over Serbia. The loss of the aircraft had a great impact on the public's perception of stealth. 
Ever since, the US has had to carefully consider when to utilize its stealth aircraft in combat. Not only would the loss of, say, an F-22 be a major embarrassment, but the debris recovered by an enemy can compromise billions of dollars spent in research and development of the materials, and falling into the hands of their rivals. So is stealth useless? No. However, it is not without some major drawbacks. 